Take us back to when those thoughts first started to manifest post your service when you're back stateside. Well, I actually, actually, I feel like I got to go back further than that because sure. it's where I learned to think that way, right? Um, it, so when you go into the into the military, um, one of the very first things that you're taught, like when you're coming off the bus at basic, is that what you're doing is no big deal. Lots of people have done this. Most of them have done it better than you, and everybody has it tougher than you. And the thing is, I'm saying that now, and it kind of sounds as if I'm being critical of it, but I'm not because it's a super necessary form of brainwashing. I mean, for me to go over to Afghanistan and to keep going into rooms as an intelligence officer where there was a reasonable chance that I could be kidnapped and killed and to do it over and over again, knowing that my life was in danger, I have to believe that this doesn't count as combat. I have to believe that if it's not a scene out of Black Hawk Down, uh, that it's not combat and therefore I have no right to be bothered by it so that I can keep going in and getting the information that my country needs as an intelligence officer. Uh, but then you come home and the problem is nobody really flips that switch off, right? So nobody, nobody sits you down and says, actually, that was some crazy stuff. Or like in my case, nobody sat me down and said, actually, after you left, we stopped doing it that way because other people, like it was too difficult for people or two of the guys that you served with, you know, they had the same problems in the years that followed that you had, but none of you three talked to each other about it. So, um, you know, that's really why I wrote the book. But to your question of, you know, what was it I was thinking initially? Well, I was thinking that I had it on really good authority that what I did was no big deal. And so as a result, uh, when I was having night terrors, uh, when I was, you know, unable to sit in a restaurant with my back to the door, uh, feeling like I was in danger all the time, that sort of thing, I, I just kept telling myself, well, it can't be PTSD because I didn't earn PTSD because what I did was no big deal. And what I found ever since making my announcement almost four years ago now, and now writing the book and doing these interviews and that kind of thing is that everybody feels that way coming out of the military. Um, mm. And, uh, and they, and that that's, that's why we win wars frequently, right? Is because as one buddy of mine told me at one point, because somewhere there was a World War II vet sitting in a VFW hall explaining, yeah, I was first wave at D-Day, but I was in the back of the landing craft. It's really no oh, big wow. deal. Wow. Um, and so uh, the thing about that is, is that I think that there's some element of that throughout our society, right? Like there's a lot of trauma going on in the news. There's, everybody has trauma in their lives. But I, gosh, if I had a dollar for every person who comes up to me and says, well, this is what I've been dealing with, but I wasn't in a war or anything. And I'm always like, you know, that actually doesn't matter because your brain and my brain don't know what each other experienced. And so the perspective is unhelpful in this case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, but I, I mean, I mentioned sort of the, yes, the army mentality, but also the, the man mentality. You know, I mean, I, I think we're still at a place in our society where there's a, in, there's in some corners a stigma on men who admit mental health problems. It's total bullshit, but it, I think it still lingers. And you write in the book about how you were feeling embarrassed you were embarrassed um like when a voter would invite, invite you into their home uh, because you know you were in politics for a while there that you mentally were getting tugged back to afghanistan you didn't think you deserved it you you write i was ashamed of myself for all of this i knew how common these experiences were like the night terrors and so on that you're having among combat vets but i was to my thinking absolutely not a combat vet uh, you, you write, a four-month tour was not enough to mess with a person's brain, I believed, especially not when that person had the advantages and support I did. To me, nothing I experienced counted as trauma. I'd never been in a firefight. All I'd done was go to meetings, and now it was frustrating and a little embarrassing that I was going through this. That, that's an obstacle in and of itself to get over just to ask for help. And in your case, it would turn out things would have to get pretty bad, pretty low, for you to see that obstacle as something you could get over. Yeah. Um, you know, trauma is, it's an injury and it's actually not that different from a physical injury. You know, had I come home and just gone and gotten treatment for this injury, I think things would have gone a lot differently, right? I mean, I would have, I would have gotten it treated. I would have learned the things that I've learned now in therapy, the techniques I have to manage uh, PTSD. I would have learned, great uncle referred to when I entered therapy as a master's degree in myself. 
that's what I needed. That's what therapy is. But I didn't get that. I waited 11 years. I waited until everything had gotten so bad that I hadn't had a good night's sleep in almost 11 years. I, I, you know, was genuinely of the belief that my family and I were in great danger all the time and would stalk the house at night armed. uh, And, you know, eventually felt such shame and self-loathing that I ended up very depressed. And if you haven't slept in 11 years and you get really depressed, you're going to get to where I got, which is, uh, I was thinking about ending my own life. I was at that point had decided not to run for president and was running for mayor of my hometown, Kansas city. And it was objectively the campaign going great. Like we were going to win and probably buy a lot, but I, I was not in a good place. Mm. And, and the reason I compare it to an injury is, you know, before I went into the army, I really severely injured my knee. It was dumb. I was playing pickup football with my buddies. And, uh, and so I, you know, I tore my ACL and my meniscus and, and the army said it was right after nine 11. they said, well, if you want to come into the army, you, you got to get surgery and you got to go through physical therapy. So I did that. I compare what I did with my brain to it's as if I went into the army without getting that surgery or that physical therapy and just said, well, I'll walk it off. You know, time will fix it. I probably, first of all, wouldn't have been able to hack what I needed to do in the army, but had I somehow been able to do it, I would have finished my time in the army with a, a right leg that was totally mangled. Well, that's what I did to my brain. I didn't go treat the injury. And yeah, my trauma um, was not as severe probably as, as a lot of other people. Um, and I got really hung up on that and f- fixated on that instead of just treating it. Uh, and so then that's what happened is I just allowed it to get so much worse. Are you tired of feeling like someone's always watching you on the internet? Maybe advertisers know a little bit too much about you or you're concerned about the privacy of your identity? Using incognito mode will not solve the problem either. IPVanish VPN is here to protect your right to privacy and to help you stay anonymous online. IPVanish helps you safely browse the internet without exposing your private details to third parties. You can use IPVanish on your computer, tablet, phone. And when you use IPVanish, all of your data is encrypted. IPVanish makes you virtually invisible online. It's that simple. IPVanish is offering an incredible 70% off 70 off their yearly plan for our listeners with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's like getting nine months for free. IPVanish is super easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you are instantly protected. Take your privacy back today with a brand rated 4.6 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Go to IPVanish.com slash Megan and use that promo code M-E-G-Y-N to claim your 70% savings. That's I-P-V-A-N-I-S-H dot com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.